All right, guys, today we're going to install a Recluse Radius CX into a 2020 uh, KTM 300 uh, XTW TPI, the Erzberg Radio Edition. And let's take a look at what we got. It's a, like I said, it's a Recluse Radius CX, which is their highest end model. Um, obviously, comes with a nice aluminum recluse clutch cover and the workhorse of the situation with the radius cx you get new pressure plate new lining plate the exp expanding ring with all the newest, coolest uh, setups in it, both uh, wedges and Teflon pads and all that stuff. Anyway, that's, that is actually what does all the real work on the Recluse. And then with the CX, you get a new inner hub and new drive plates or driven plates and drive plates, steels and frictions. You get a slave cylinder and you get your tuning stuff. You get uh, bolts to hold this whole thing together different springs uh, to tune when the thing engages and all that stuff. So we're gonna start by taking these and dumping them in here and putting some oil in there to soak them so that they get soaking while we're getting going uh, so that the friction materials all um, got oil in it and it's all ready to rock and roll. So we'll get that soaking here and we're gonna come over here and take apart the bike. All right. Like I said, we got a 2020 300 XCW TPI Erzberg Rodeo Edition. Pretty sweet bike. This thing has six miles of him riding it around the, his block <laughs> back in Texas. So it is brand spanking new. Um, so yeah, let's take the thing apart and see what's inside. One of the things to know is that this O-ring on the clutch cover has to come out and go into the new clutch cover. It's one of the things I really don't understand why Recluse doesn't give you a new one, but they don't. So you got to make sure you pull this out and uh, you don't want to do it with like a knife and jack it up. So you got to be careful with it and get it out of there. And we'll put it in the new one. Now this cover becomes extra. All right, so this is a DDS clutch, damper, diaphragm damper spring clutch. Uh, so there's no individual springs around these bolts like on a normal clutch. This whole piece right here is a spring. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So this ring, is the ring that pushes down and pushes pressure on this spring. I don't know if you guys can see, but that spring, it's cupped. It's, you know, cupped up like this. So that's what pushes pressure down on, this is the pressure plate to hold tension on the clutch. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, but here's a little, maybe, I don't know if it's a little known, but here's a fact. This is the way Harleys do clutches. And honestly, generally, I try to avoid anything that Harley ever does. <laughs> So I'm not 100% sure it's my favorite clutch design because Harley does it, but it seems to work okay for KTM. Important little piece here, don't lose this. This is just like a, a washer to keep that damper uh, spring from digging into the pressure plate. And this needs to go onto the new one from Recluse. Old pressure plate is going away. Now let me show you guys what it's got going on over here. These trays are awesome. They've got rounded edges, so it's easy to like scoop things up and out, and you can organize things how they go. It's really, really handy. I'll put a link in the description for those things. I buy them from my Matco guy, but they're not made by Matco. So anyway, they're pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna take our push rod and throw out 
and put it over in our little tray. Keep it all happy. Now, here is a key to removing this stuff. This nut right here, generally, if you just did it the way the book shows to do it, you'd need a whole special holder for all this stuff. You'd take the plates out. And that. Anyway, don't need to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to have to drive these tabs open. And then we can take an impact on here. And what we can do is we can take our fingers and push on the stack of plates to effectively engage the clutch that's going to then hold this still while this rotates off. KTM is putting some serious Loctite on those nuts now. You can see it. It's like the green stuff. It's like sleeve retainer. That's gnarly. I don't know why you would need to do that when you've got a lock washer on it. But I guess maybe I'll put a little red Loctite on it back when we go back together. But that just seems excessive. So when you're coming out with these, you gotta be careful. These little dowels are separate and they like to fall out. And what you don't want them to do is fall into the motor. So take, be really careful, pull that whole stack out. One more. So I like to take these out, put them in the tray so they, we know where they are and they don't fall down in there. All right, so there's the inner hub. Here's the thing you gotta do. You gotta take this inner piece out like that and you got to get these little rubber dampers out and put them into the new uh, recluse inner hub um, when I do this on an older bike that's got miles and hours on it um, I usually just replace these but since this thing is brand new I'm just gonna use these uh, ones and put them in all right there's our new recluse inner hub I'm gonna take our dampers Drop them into place. Take our, this piece, I'm not sure exactly what this is called. Just another piece of the hub. And push it down in there. Now, when you're taking this thing apart, you gotta make sure that this doesn't come off with the old inner hub, because it can stick to it, because you know, film of oil on it, it can slide off. It didn't here, but you wanna make sure that goes back on. I'm gonna take our hub, put it down like that. All right, now we're gonna put the stack in. They come with all the instructions. I recommend reading them, even if you've done it before, because every now and then they'll change something. Uh, so I always like to look at them and figure out exactly how they want the stack to go. One thing to pay attention to, the direction of these uh, steel plates. You want to definitely put them in the way they say. I think it's for oil flow. Anyway, you want to do it right. So before you do that, you want to take your dowels, slide them into place. And they should pretty well stay in place because they should have a little bit of oil on them from when you took them out. And that'll help them stay where they need to go. Steel first. Then friction and just alternate. take our expanding ring it goes in as if it were a friction so once you get it all in there we're gonna have to put our nut back on the close kind enough to send you a new uh, locking washer put that on a little bit of Loctite on this guy always started by hand again push down on this that'll hold it in place And if you just bend one tab, that means if you take this back apart, you can bend this one without like bending it and opening it, you know, and weakening it. So that's always a good idea. Take our throw out. Then we take our pressure plate with the lining plate installed so that it fits all the way down nice and happy. 
you put this on here and then when you're pushing on it you'll feel the hydraulic clutch kind of let it slide out of the way that's a good thing take our protector washer thing I'm not sure exactly what you call that deal but and damper spring ring I'm going to kind of line these up and now I like to put it back in the number two position there's a one two and a three I like to put it back in the number two it comes with new bolts you got to use these bolts I have a story of a guy that I know who bought a recluse himself was going to install it himself that's all well and good he didn't notice these he didn't read the instructions and uh, he put the normal bolts back in here those bolts chewed through the aluminum recluse cover while he was riding it the aluminum then went into an oil passage blocked the oil passage and locked up his brand new 450 so yeah he didn't put these in like I said use the old one the old ones and they stick out just a little bit and they went in the aluminum like I said the oil the aluminum dust went into an oil passage uh, stopped the oil from moving locked up the brand new motor brand new 450 like 0.5 hours on it when it locked up so these are t25 torques and on clutch stuff I always like to go crisscross pattern kind of get it to come down evenly so at this point I like to take the bike and put it in gear that way when you're tightening these down It'll stop once it gets to the there we go. There we go. All right. All right, so that part of the recluse is done. Now we got to get her up on the lift and work put the new slave cylinder on there because that's actually how the recluse does what it needs to do is that with the new slave cylinder you can open up the pressure plate just a little bit and disengage the clutch so that when uh, the RPMs of the motor come up that expanding ring expands and uh, hooks up. I've got another video explaining recluses a little bit more in depth. I'll put a card right up here if you guys want to see that. Um, so you can check that out. It really goes into in depth into how exactly they do what they do. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and get that thing up here on the lift and um, put the slave cylinder on. All right, so now slave cylinder time. And this is interesting because this is one of the things you get with your Erzberg Rodeo uh bike is a slave cylinder guard that we're now going to take off and remove because you can't have this kind of guard on there uh with the recluse slave all right so when i'm doing this i like to break this loose before i undo the rest of this because if you take that slave cylinder off now and then you're trying to break this loose it's a giant pain so We'll take that loose now. And inexplicably, it's an 11 millimeter. Makes no sense. There we go. Take that guy off. Get our gasket on here. All right, so now we gotta bleed this thing. Uh, fortunately, it is a Brembo and it takes dot four. So, put a normal bleed syringe. I'm all uh, making a giant mess right now, but there we go. There we go. Now, you can actually
Works good just sitting in there. It's all uphill, so that's good. So now let's drop this thing down and we'll take the cap off and we'll start by pushing the little fluid down and then we'll push it back up and we should be good to go. Then we'll adjust our clues and we'll be finished. We'll crack that. So some bubbles there. I'll go ahead and squeeze our lever. Let's see what we get out. There we go. We'll squeeze again. There's lots of boobles. Lots of boobles. Lots of Michael boobles coming out of there. So tighten that up. Let's see. So nothing. It's all right. And as with brakes, you want to make sure this doesn't get too low. Or otherwise, you'll suck some more air and have to start all over. Zach's installing valves and he's having a lot of fun. The worst part is getting the keepers down in their spot. So, but he's got to learn. So that's starting to look really good and uh, feel really good up here. All right, I'm feeling really good about the clutch bleed. Got this all tightened up. I'm gonna Gonna bump the lever. You can see a little bit of bubbles coming out. That's the nice thing about the clutches on these is that everything is downhill from there. So uh, bubbles come out generally all by themselves. So that feels really good. Now I'm gonna top that off just a little bit. Now we're gonna set the recluse adjustment four millimeter allen back this out until it feels loose and then we come in until it feels like it stops and then we're gonna go full turn it's got little tick marks on it plus two now we're gonna start it up and i actually leave the cap off of this when i start it up here because the vibration will help any more bubbles come out while we're waiting see there's one right there so basically when you're doing this recluse wants you to warm the bike up get the oil warm and all that uh and we're going to do that eventually but i like to check it cold because it takes a long time for transmission oil to warm up in a two-stroke like a long time so you're gonna have to ride it first but um so what i'm gonna do is see where i can put this camera all right, now we're gonna check for the free play gain. And what that is, is when we rev the motor with a little bit of pressure on the clutch lever, when we rev the motor, it should move in between a 16th and an 18th of an inch. So, let's see if I can. So actually, that feels pretty good. Now, Recluse gives you a little rubber band to put around that and that's all well and good but um i've done this enough times that i know how it's supposed to feel and how much pressure i need to put on it so now we're going to go take it for a test ride all right so now we got the bike we got the adjustment set for the free play gain now we want to check and make sure it's not going to go anywhere when we put it in gear feels pretty good It's always a weird feeling not having to use a clutch. So 
Uh, now they want us to break it in. We're gonna put it in second. To start from a stop. Roll up to like three quarter throttle, come back down to a stop. Roll up to three quarter throttle, come back down to a stop. Do that 20 times. Then we're gonna put it in third, do that 20 times. And then we're gonna check the free play again and adjustment again. Uh, and then we're gonna be good. Should be ready to rock and roll. So, for a second. It's springtime and I'm stoked. Things are awesome. We got, like, it's whatever. It's so much work to do. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you think what we're doing is awesome and great and is helpful, then please hit the subscribe button. It does mean a lot. And uh, like I said, we're trying to grow this channel. When we hit 3,000 subscribers, I cut this hair. So get it done. My wife is dying for you guys to get this done so I can cut my hair. Um, also, when we hit 5,000 subscribers, we're going to be blowing up a YZ250, so stay tuned for that. Um, I've got a ton of awesome things coming. I love you guys so much. Get out, spread the gospel of two wheels, and please, you seriously have to find some time to ride your dirt bikes!